this computer. I am now going to share my screen. And we're going to today's topic is mental toughness. And I, you're going to benefit from uh, my recent experiences. I'm going to use this and talk through what went well and what didn't go well for me in Florida. And um, at the end of the day, it was a mental game for me. Um, okay, so hi guys. Um, for those who are dialing in and viewing the video later on, this is Coach Steve and Coach Marcus Alan. We have some people in the room. I'm going to go through mental side of racing and um, using my own experience in Florida as some positives, some negatives, and then we will have Q and A for the people in the room. Okay, all right. Can everyone see the screen? The quick thumbs up if you can. Nice. Okay. All right. So mental preparation. Uh, why should we um, bother with this? Because ask the question, is anyone, as I call it, fritzed out in a race or the, the mind is won over their body, even though the body's not in bits? Um, I have. Uh, Ironman Italy, I had a meltdown. 70.3 Mallorca, I had a meltdown and everything out the window. Um, Ironman Florida, I had a um did i have a meltdown no but the the voices in my head definitely won and i'll talk through how that happened um hey alan how are you how are things we're just going through mental mental toughness and how we do that alan's used the game so i go through kind of the 15 20 minute presentation we so if you have any questions on the presentation hold on to them or put them in the chat and at the end, we have a QA and a and we go around the room and see if anyone has anything specific to address either on the topic in question or anything triathlon related. OK, so as I said, why bother with mental prep? It can completely screw your race um, as it has exactly in Italy and New York. And I'll talk about Florida. Um, how can it happen? What's the impact? Um, well, lots of self-doubt. And, the, and for me and um, specifically, um, I always feel there's around four or five times when you're racked with self-doubt, either in the lead up to the race or during the race um, or just at particular times um, in your training block. Um, you find yourself having these conversations with yourself about this is I can't do this and um, this is too much. You're kind of looking around and you've, you're, you're in your own head. You're sort of going, no, no, that guy looks much stronger than me. Oh, there's no way that the swimmer, they sure they've got the boys right. That looks very, very long. So I talk about um, the tri-hero and the tri-devil. This is how it manifests to me in terms of there's a guy one on one shoulder who's saying, no, listen, you've done the training. You can do this. You, you, you hold this pace. You can hold this pace. And then there's the tri-devil on the other side that just goes, no, no, just don't be ridiculous. You can't handle this. And, um, you know, your legs are weak. You didn't do all the training. Remember that long run you missed? Um, and you sort of all these items, oops, that you that um start eating away your confidence. For me, it can manifest itself into uncontrollable nerves and just lost energy. Um, where as I said, normally I'm bouncing around energy, but suddenly if everything's heavy, um, it's hard to move the legs and all the rest. And for me, if I win the mental battle on the day. I tend to have a good race. If I even 50-50 and the uh, if I don't completely win it, it's a bad day and things go um, off. And this is why, in my opinion, the training, and you will have mental battles in the training, but the percentage of weighting of it is slightly different. For me in the training, it's 70% physical. It's like, you know, it's hard on the legs. It's a 140k bike if you're an iron man. It's a 70k bike if you're a half iron man or or it's an interval session and it's just sore in the legs and, and you go, oh. But there's also an element, mental element. You sort of go, oh, I, I can't get out. It's cold. It's wet. And you're, the tri-devil is going, no, no, stay inside. It's warm. And that's, but you still have to win that battle to go out and do the training. For me, when racing, it's flipped on its head as an, it's 30% physical because you've, if you've done the training, you've got the fitness, you've got the base, you have it, but it's 70% mental. You're comparing yourself to other athletes. You're comparing yourself to the course. You're comparing yourself to the conditions. And it, it becomes really a, a battle of mind over matter at that stage. Um, 
So we need to prepare for this. As I said, the brain itself is a muscle that we also need to work on. Now, again, I'll use my Florida example. I've done my mental prep. I know all the tri tricks, the, the strategies and the tools in this, but I didn't practice them in my lead up to this race and it became my downfall. Um, so it's not only something that you do once and you've got it. It's not. It's part of almost like your training process. Um, okay, so how do we train ourselves to be mentally strong? Um for me, the start with like, what's your reason and motivation taking on this challenge in the first place? Um, because what we do is hard. Um, a lot of other people are sitting on the couch and never will get off and all the rest. And they, th they just think we're mad. Um, it's hard to do the training and it's hard to actually race on the day. This for me is where I fell down in, in Florida. I wasn't really, really focused on a, on, on a goal, an outcome. I was just trying to get over a bad race in Cork. I didn't have my idea of my numbers. So it was very easy for the try devil to win over the try hero because my 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 want or my my drive wasn't strong enough on the day, and suddenly it became it it just kicked my ass. Um, another way, a tool and technique that I have used in the past quite successfully, um, is have mantras. Mantras are kind of short, powerful statements that you use to keep yourself focused. Now, I actually did do this well in the swim in Florida and because I had a mantra of, you know, always on feet. And that for me is um, you're always looking for feet and, and either hanging on to someone's feet or you're moving to the next one. It kept me focused. And it was a choppy swim. So I also had was always on feet and punch the waves. So instead of just trying to glide through the waves, I was, I was kind of punching my way and it worked and I had a decent swim split. I didn't have a, a mantra worked out for the bike and that's where it came undone. Um, but again, mantras on a bike I have used in the past, which are very, very focusing are arrow, arrow, arrow. Have the um, was it um, if you have a, a person you're doing this for and all the rest, as in that that works, as in you know, say your your the person's name or kind of like or, or your hero, just uh, something that's short, it's quick, and it snaps you back into it. The second half of the bike, when things were coming apart for me, I drifted off completely. I was having weird conversations with my head, and I just didn't. My numbers dropped and. I couldn't get myself back in the game. I didn't even have, as I said, something to snap me out of it. Um, another way of keeping yourself mentally strong is keep a log, the training data, milestone, rides, runs, and how you felt after these. Because what you're trying to do is embed that the mental resilience where you're sort of going, look, I've done this. I've done a 180K bike. In fact, in one week, I've covered like um, 300 uh, kilometers. This is nothing. Um, and... Again, so these are things, these are more for almost like a uh, first timer. If you lock them in, it really kind of helps you get very focused and sort of helps you build your build up this, the verbal strength of your try hero, so to speak. Um, also, practice race specific elements in your training and people on my plans will see this, very, this, this features a lot in my build sessions where we have race specific paces, we have race specific bricks and all the rest. Because what you want to do is don't know what it feels like when you're not under pressure to perform and you go, actually, that's that felt sore, but was doable. And it, again, it gives you confidence. And um, other things you can do uh, in terms of the bringing the your mental A game to the race day, as in map out, prepare, familiarize that you sort of everything that you can do to uh minimize stress in the lead up of the day it, again that doesn't drain you mentally um again from my florida example i was in a place on my own i was uh, a little bit um unfocused shall we say and uh, my mind was wandering i was doing and because i wasn't there with a crew i found that that ate away at my mental energy i had to do everything myself and i was a little bit um just i wasn't focused in whereas normally for example i go train and go race with certain people and they all sort of they're all on it and they're kind of um everyone's excited i spent a lot of time in, my, in a hotel room my, on my own watching just crap tv and it was just my focus dissipated um so that added to the fact that i was mentally weak going into the race um look how far i've come again 
this is in your lead up to your race in terms of this is why I'm a big fan of keeping milestone sessions, training uh, milestones, um, looking at average pace for long runs and, and your average heart rate and look back. Um, so you sort of go, look, I never, I've never run further than 16 miles in my life. Um, now I've run three 20 milers in the build up to this Ironman or whatever it is, you know. Um, now here's where I completely fell down on in Florida. You should have a map with an A, B and a C goal. Um, well, actually, no, this is actually what saved me a little bit. Your A goal is your absolute, all the stars align, no mechanicals, no, the weather's perfect. Um, you get the nutrition 100% on and you hit your goal. And that's, you know, a time goal, an age goal, placing. Your B goal is uh, where something minor goes wrong and you can recoup and you fall back onto that. Um, but it's 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 one blip. It might be, you know, you drop your nutrition on the bike, but you manage to recover. Um, your C goal is um, what's your real kind of, in case of emergency, break glass. Now for Florida, I had a goal of under 10 and a half hours. That was my A goal. Um, my B goal was to kind of, to beat a couple of guys who I should definitely beat and literally come under around, um, it would have been under 11 hours. Um, and my seagull was, I've never gone down as far as a seagull, but my seagull suddenly became to finish. And my race went as follows. As I said, I had, I miss, and again, also back to the familiarized point, I misread people's opinions on the course. They said a flat fast and you'd have a, a tailwind all the way out, as a headwind of the way out and a tailwind of the way back. That wasn't the case. So I got a shock on the race day. So suddenly my bike split was way off at half at half point and I didn't have enough fuel. Um, so, and then the headwind, when I turned around, the the, the promised head uh, tailwind never arrived. So I was suddenly in Beagle territory, but then my legs went. So I was suddenly in Seagull. And I've and I, my Seagull, I, I had to learn on the fact was literally, I've just got to finish. I, I've had to get to the finish line. And that, was where, as I said, in terms of my race execution, I failed badly and it was my fault. Um, I didn't, I got cocky. I didn't bring enough nutrition. I, I didn't have a backup plan on it. Um, but my seagulls dig in and just literally finish. Um, I had visualization options, by the way, and games that you can play to keep your, your, your tri devil distracted. Um, when I felt that I just got out in the marathon and I just had nothing in my legs and I was trying to walk or run, I tried to visualize uh, the, the the finish line. Um, obviously, I tried to visualize the people at home watching the tracker and sort of go on and willing me to move forward, um, which which it did help. And it, but at the same time, when I was going over little mats and it was beeping, I went, "Oh man." They're all wondering what's going on. Because, uh, again, on a good day, I can run a three and a half hour marathon in, in, a, in, a, in an Ironman. I was at that day, it was 5.15. Um, but then the other tricks that I did to, um, what you call it, kind of keep my mind occupied, I, I started to kind of like uh, trying to count people I was passing, even though even when everyone was on a slow death march, as in like, I went, okay, look, I've gone past more people there who overtook me. These little games that will keep you occupied. Um, the other elements is again, sorry that I'll bring back to actually bringing your A game to the race day. Um, kind of ties up to a little bit what I've prompted for. Stick to your routines, having a bit of confidence as in that, how you do your stretching, how you check your bike, etc. cetera. Um, smile, relax, and feel positive and think positive. For me, again, I had very negative feelings on the bike and that just ate away my energy. Whatever about not having enough fuel, it just didn't wasn't there. Um, use your mantras and visualizations. As I said, having your powerful statements. By the way, I had no mantra on the run aside from you cannot DNF, which as I said, you can't have two DNFs in a row um, in your race. And as I said, the visualizations I had were people kind of willing me at home and also, the fact that I reckon that I, I was my girlfriend was going to kill me if I DNF'd in two races and after coming over like uh, thousands of miles to get her. Another 
trick I use as well is um, dedications is a very powerful way of digging into your kind of mental inner strength as an if your reason is you're dedicating this to a lost loved one or to someone you're trying to inspire and all the rest you have to think about them on the day and not the pain you're going through in your legs one of my friends who works in hospitals i said and he's an incredibly big guy but he runs very very hard and he always does a very good time i said what do you say to yourself and he goes his says look I'm not having any, and this this pain I'm going through is nothing compared to what I've seen in X, Y, and Z. And he uses that to kind of literally kind of focus himself. Also, another one I, I people have used is, you know, there will be days when I cannot do this. This is not that day. Um, so these are things, again, literally, as I said, back to you're, you're trying to overcome the tri-devil with the tri-hero by, by using all the tricks and, and tools in your head to and there is a lot of distraction technique you sort of go look because what we do it's sore it's hard and it, it's 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 painful but you're trying to go look why am i doing this what can i get that and then stick to the plan um, and again and also have a better plan than i did um Okie doke. All right. That's the main presentation. What I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to stop the the recording um, and we're going to have a bit of q and I'm also going to let Mark talk a little bit about what if he'd like to add anything and then we'll just throw it open to the floor. OK. All righty. So thanks for watching the video. Um, please make every attempt. We'll have the next session will be on Monday at 9 p.m. And session details will be sent out. OK. All right. Mark, anything you want to add to my. Uh, mental strength yeah i've got a few bits um but first i think you know a big thanks steve you know that that's not easy to to be as frank and honest after after the race so you know big shout out to you for you know sharing that that, that knowledge and information with us so fair play to you um and then i've got a few other points there's a there's a really quite a on tv at the moment up in up in the north here and it has to do with, you know, attracting people to to teach a college. But it goes along the lines of as a the guy in his inner and you know, he's taking a maths exam and he's looking around the room and everybody's squirreling away, answering all the math questions. And he's got his look in his paper with and he has mind's gone blank and he starts crying. And the teacher comes across him and says, Don't look at the big problem. It's a series of little questions you have to do. And I think that's very relevant to to triathlon. You know, we we look at a an Ironman or a half or an Olympic or a sprint. You know, don't look at the entire race that you have to achieve. Break it down into small sections. So mentally prepare yourself to do a one lap swim, or break it down even further. You're going to swim to the first boy and then the second boy and then the next turn point. You know, the the bike is is not. You know, if you start focusing on a 112 mile bike, sorry. You know, or you know, or 180k or whatever it is, that's a mammoth mental challenge to put into your head. So break it down into every aid station or two or three laps, whatever it is. And the same with the marathon. You know, break it down into into small chunks. You know, and reward yourselves after each chunk. You know, so really break it down into the into those sections. You know, Steve, you touched on 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 mantras there, and yeah, look, there's. You know, everybody's going to have their own particular mantra of what they what they going to do to drive them forward. But it is, it is really key, you know, to keep the mind the mind focused. Um, and you know, you mentioned there about you know training, you know, training for the race. So we all we all jump on the turbo, or we all go out running. You know, we'll use distraction techniques to get us through the pain on the turbo. We'll put on some, you know, I don't know rock music or whatever music you're into to distract yourself from the pain of the turbo. You're not going to have music on the day of the race. You're not going to be able to rely on that distraction to get you through the pain. So train sometimes without those distractions, train sometimes with you inside your own head. Yeah. Don't, don't rely on that music to give you that distraction when the tough, when it starts to get tough. So do a bit of training without the music especially on the run, you know, you're doing multiple laps of a run, which can be, let's face it, boring as hell, you know, on some courses, you know, some courses are fantastic when you're in the crowd all the time and that's your distraction. 
And again, another one again is, you know, is caffeine. Caffeine is a great way to block pain. And the side effect of caffeine is also keeping you mentally alert. So it doesn't allow the mind to wander and the watts to drop and all the rest of it. So, you know, think about your caffeine intake, what you normally take during the day on a day-to-day -day basis. You need to be taking that caffeine on the race because that caffeine, you, you know, your body's used to caffeine. You're taking three espressos or three cups of coffee a day and you take no caffeine on race day. Mentally, you're at a loss because mentally your body's going, where's this lovely drug I'm used to that keeps me focused and keeps me alert? So, you know, track not only your nutrition, but track your caffeine as well. So I am probably rambling on a bit here, but I've got a few no. points noted. I'm really interested in the psychology of, 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 of racing. So, um, and, you know, to keep yourself, to keep your mind active, you know, a good technique is to do mental maths. You know, when you, especially on the run, literally, you know, work and, you know, just random uh, math equations in your head. Like um, I, I take one, one stride as a meter and I've got 42 kilometers to take. How long, you know, and just mental maths to work to, to get this out of the bad place it's potentially going to be in. So use that as another tech. There's loads of techniques to, you know, to do that. But mental maths apparently is a really good one to focus your mind away from physical endurance. So, you know, give that a go. It definitely works. Just on that, actually, Mark, and I like that, actually. And it's something that I would typically do. And I did start. Um, I'm a weak enough swimmer where I want to be in terms of my finish time. Um, so what I do on the bike is I actually try to keep count of the amount of people I pass because, you know, and you sort of go, okay, so, and that, that's also not only maths as in you kind of go, but it's also very positive reinforcing. You go like, okay, in the last hour I've caught 50 people. Now, again, in Florida, by the way, I had to adjust this because I'd normally account and I'd also give myself minus two points if someone overtook me. So I'm trying to get a nice high number. And then like, except if someone goes past me, I take away. So seeing as I was falling so bad, so badly on the bike, um, I had to stop counting the um, what you call us on the I, I I just went, look, we'll just count the people I overtake. We're not going to detract because I was going to be in negative numbers at the end of it. But uh, but again, it was just keeping the head focused and it's something to move away because otherwise you could stare at the at the at what clock, uh, the bike computer. And when you're when you're going slower than when you want that can as if it's going to treacle I go like oh god as I'm like, I hang on, look down I should be and maybe I'm, I'm definitely now another 10k in the in the bike and go 3k oh god so yeah positive mental matters as usual yeah and then like even you know every time you pass somebody you know you steal some of their power you know, I know it's a real childish one but every time you go pass somebody I'll take a bit of that power thanks very much and you just you know anything like that just to you know keep you focused on and I suppose the last the last point I have is around around goals and, you know, definitely being fluid, um, you know, as Steve said, in A, B and C, but also to park each discipline at the end of each discipline. So once you've done the swim, you park it. There's no point in looking back. It's done. You know, don't be and you've no idea what everybody else has done. So, you know, if you do you know, two minutes off the pace you wanted to do, does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. It's done. And you've no idea how the conditions or how the race went for everybody else. So park it and focus on what you've got to do in the next discipline. Same goes for the bike as well. Yeah. That's me, Steve. And just just on that as well, there's been races where I've kind of, as I said, I've let the the, the tri devil has won to a certain extent. But um, and I found out at the end of the day, everyone was having a bad day. Um, and if I'd continued on and just kept going, I would have beaten. The people I wanted to beat because they were having equally a bad day, but I let it get to me, and um, and I went and I sort of gave in and I dropped the pace where it's going to look just to put yourself in a little hurt locker just for another five k, and it's literally one of our training buddies who beat me by nine seconds in Lanzarote, and I was just going, ah, oh, I've, I've lost this whole thing. I'm never, and I thought he was miles ahead of me. He was nine seconds. That is literally just me closing my eyes for like a hundred meters and keeping running because and so. No matter what your day is going, like focus on you, focus on the, and don't get, oh, that guy's gone past me at a, a million miles an hour. You don't know what's going to happen to him on the run, et cetera. So it is all about you on the day and agree completely on the, the, the discipline specific stuff. 
All right, we shall throw it open to the, the floor. Does anyone have any questions or any observations or additions that like to talk about what they do in races or what they found mentally tough? Since you've talked a lot about how the tri devil can distract you away from uh, what you're trying to do, um, I wonder if there's any comment about how the tri hero can sometimes distract you away from what you're trying to do and stop you being really present. It's about that. That could come down to slightly goal inflation as well, as in, um, which can be dangerous. Uh, as in, you come out and you're sort of. You're, you're slightly ahead in the swim and then the bike's a bit and you want yeah oh listen i was aiming for it. now to be honest you're a great example where you you did push on and you actually got a super time even ahead but whereas there you possibly in the danger of you came off the bike in and automatically in a much faster position than you thought but you and you managed to but i think actually what you did you did compartmentalize you put you focused on the, the run itself as an entity um, rather than sort of go, oh, if I keep going, I keep going, I'll, I'll go under, uh, was it 10 hours and, and and then like blow up and end up like limping home in the run. Like, so how did you do that on the, in Italy in terms of, because you were ahead yeah, of the that's, that's part of the reason why I put it forward because I, I almost had to shut both of them up. Um, you know, to, and there's a one, there's one point, I think, coming around to halfway in the marathon. And in my head, I was thinking, this is, this is going amazing. This is going so well. And, but actually, it's like, no, shut up. You've still got half a marathon to go. And you've done all of this. If you, if you start getting yourself ahead and start, my, my head was going, it was on, it was on the magic carpet. Um, it, was, it was running down that. It was hearing my name being called. It was, it was going, and I just had to shut that up in the same way as anything else that was negative. It was actually the positive in that situation just needed to be shut up and, and focus and try and remain as present as possible. And the thing that was keeping me present was the was the heart rate. Mm. Just focus on, on that output. The thing, the one thing that I could control in that race, um, in the run, was was the heart rate. Um, when I was feeling good, try and make some progress. If it was starting to get difficult, then you know okay, at the next water state, get to the next aid station, maybe just walk through as you have something to drink, but then get going again, um, breaking it down into those little bits and pieces. But, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it, it was, it was, yeah, I look back on it now and realise just listening to you there, Steve, not only was it kind of that A game, but actually the mental, the mental game just, just worked. Um, but um Interestingly enough, I was talking with somebody um, today um, and, I, and I look back on that experience compared to my first Ironman when I was out there and it was amazing, it was wonderful and the experience of everything. With this one, I, I realised that actually I'd, I'd zoned in on myself quite a bit, probably for two days beforehand. I'd become not quite recluse, but very much into myself. Um, and actually on race day, didn't go see any of the, my goodness, the friends who are doing it for the first time. It was just me, just me, just me, just me. And I look back and I realise actually in part, whilst I did what I, well, couldn't have dreamt of doing, I also missed out in some of that way as well. So actually I think that was, that was an, interest, an interesting reflection anyway there. And it's very interesting though, Malcolm, you know, if you, you know, had you've gone to see, you know, the, the newbies for want of a better mm. term, and, you know, taken on, you know, maybe not consciously, but subconsciously taken on some of their stresses yeah. that they, they would have no doubt imparted on you, you know, yeah. how would that have affected your, you know, mental, you know, uh, robustness on the, on race day? But anyway, it's a really interesting point, you know, on, you know, you try and surround yourself with positive people you know, during the, the build up to the race. Um, well, that's what I would, that's what I typically try and do. So it is a really interesting point. Um, you know, do you do that or do you, you know, like you say, do you miss out on the opportunities to have a bit of crack? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, there's a fine balance, right? I think so. And I think, yeah, at the end of the day, this was for, for six months beforehand, I trained hard. A lot of the training had been on my own because it just mm -hmm. didn't fit in with how the club was doing stuff. I've got a young family, so I had to do it at different times. And it was a case of, well, actually, you know what? I've done all this and okay, yeah, fine. I just need to go and zone out. I need to do my thing. Mm -hmm. um focus on on me um 
Um, yeah, I, I don't think there's any. You know, I think you know having you know having that bit of selfishness for one of a better term is is you know for me is the is the right thing to do, especially for an A race. Yeah. You know, completely absorbing what you have to do yeah. rather than yeah, you because know, like I say, taking on other people's stresses is not not ideal before a race. Yeah. And again, I think it's the, the depends on personality. Like I tend to feed off other people's energy and uh, was it not, not even nerves, but I found for me in Florida, cause I was on my own and a lot of people, I didn't know anyone normally at this, either club mates or the, or the Irish people around. And look, I'm, I'm fine talking to whoever, but I found it was, I missed that. And I think I almost got myself a little bit too wound up whereas mark knows me at races and he mark actually gives out to me at races i'm too chatty but I, some of my best races where i've, I've just I've just relaxed into it whereas i almost felt i went in a little bit not 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 stressed but just um a little bit wound up because uh, again in my head it was a fast course and like you know there's no one here that i that, that i need to I, di- I didn't even know anyone who i was could pace against and stuff like that so Whereas having a bit of chat like that helps me unwind. Again, it's 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 just personality specific. Yeah. Um. Alrighty. So Kenny, when you had your first seventy dot three, how did you do, or how were your how was your tri devil and your tri hero on the day? Um. Pretty good till I got to the run, and then the devil just. I don't know. I had. A, had a terrible run, so I beat myself up a lot on it. Nothing, even though I had planned out what I was going to do, it just fell apart. But I mean, I'm I'm still hey I'm I beat my goal, so I'm still happy with it. But you know, I'm looking back at it thinking, okay, what if, what if, what if? So, and there's an element of that as well. I probably should add another one about the, the actual post race reflections how you will absorb and sort of break that down will feed into your next race. Like I've been very, I've been very candid and been very honest and I know what I went wrong. Um, and there's lots of, like you can't ever change that race. And by the way, first off, you need to focus on the positive as in you got your goal. So that that's winning now. And, and you'll always look back and you're sort of go, oh, like I, I used to stop looking at myself at Excel sheets when I was racing sprint races and national series. Go, look, if I'd only run five seconds per kilometer faster, I would have ended up in the podium, my age group. And and then, because I had to remind myself then the next day and actually on what the next race I did, I went now, now Stephen, go five, 10, 10 seconds per kilometer now. Cause you'll catch. And I, I, I had to, and then there's, I just can't, I said, I'm going flat out. So that's my argument. I have myself when I'm looking at the spreadsheet and I'm forgetting about what I was going through. So the fact that you, you toughed it out and you got and you kept moving and you got to the goal like that's the most positive and you can't influence that race time at all no more than i can influence florida but what you can do is sort of go look okay the run wasn't great what what when did the wheels come off did i have enough fuel on the bike did i kind of uh did i start off a bit too fast what did i take on enough hydration um or what, what did i have any mantras in my head specifically for the run if one thing started, like how did I stop myself slowing down and then bring that into the next race? And that's how you turn these what ifs into a hell yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, Jason, your try hero and try devil in Barcelona. Who was the who well, was the winner? Uh, talking talking about when you're talking about training, I was cycling back from the pool and the run uh, and I was listening uh, but yeah uh, Barcelona like I was stoked with everything um, until I got to like 4k's into the run and then I just couldn't go any further like I knew I had to run 420 on a kilometer and I was like I can do it I've done it but my legs just didn't move <laughs> like I knew I had to I knew that's what I wanted I knew I could do it but it just just didn't compute like just didn't didn't move my legs I I mean I still got like a two hour half uh, marathon time which is still good but it's not what I wanted so like obviously it won but all I've learned from that is to 
prepare better because if you prepare better, then you'll perform better. So you've got to, got to do it, right? So take that, learn that, and carry on. Like if I do an Olympic, it's no problem. Like that's that's fine. But the <laughs> just that extra 10k is a problem. But it, it's but it also does come down to the mental side again. <laughs> like in the Olympics, with the kind of half and the and the full, you've more time for those voices to have those weird conversations. You've more time to have those weird dips in your energy, not explainable by fuel, not explainable by fitness or strength. It's literally the mind just kind of just takes over. So do do not underestimate the power of sort of having the the mantras or to be prepared for that moment where the pace starts slipping what do you do what's your what's your fallback um i now know a couple of things i'll do differently um, and and again even if it's a case of you have a flashback to that that race where you go i just let it go um, and you go i don't want to be that person where i was overtaken by that guy and i know i can beat that guy with my eyes closed and you go you have to go i just just have to dig in and stuff like that um but it's it, and it's once you let the, the the devil win over on it, it's very hard to get going again. So it's it's those mini battles, and again, as Mark says, breaking into little chunks, win that little mini battle. The next five k, if I hold four a four twenty snake five k, then I'll ease myself off, and then you get to the and then you get the oh, I've just another five k, and it's breaking it into the a bit of a much easier kind of a uh, obstacle to overcome. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so we've got a couple of new guys, by the way. Alan, how are we? Yeah, good, good, good. Um, I think for me, it's a, this is a quite quite a pertinent topic, um, given that that the the last race I did. So you know, a bit of history. Um, about a year ago, I did um, my first seventy point three, but th this one was cancelled. Um, not the best great bike performance not not the best run um but i think the the one that really got me was um i did the the weymouth um the uk weymouth um 70.3 in september now um and I, I don't think i've ever blown up that hard in my life um you know to the point where i had a good swim strong bike um but i think where the wheels fell off was um on the bike i dropped um nutrition i dropped a water bottle as well managed to to get get another one on the um on the on the ride um but by the time i got onto the run i was like okay i need to play a bit of catch up here um started off the run and it felt good felt light um but then 5k in there was a whoops here, here's an issue um and then by 10k it was a case of all right i'm way far in the hole there's no way i can come back from no, there's no way I can, you know, my body is just not letting me take anything on. Um, and it just progressively got worse to the point where I think um, the last 5K was just a case of, you know, starting to feel dizzy here, just don't walk. Um, like you said, I went, went from, okay, I'm on my A plan, then B, okay, I can try to recover this, and then C, okay, just don't stop. Um, <clears throat> so generally speaking, it's like quite a hard one, still happy happy with the time that I got, but also thinking back like, well, you know, I could have gone a lot faster. Um, it's always that, that kind of nagging thoughts in the back of your head. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's why I got into the sport, to be honest, is, is, um, you know, I didn't get into, to, to do great, you know, get, get great times and that sort of thing. I got into the sport because, um, I wanted to work on, on mental resilience. No other reason than that. Um, so yeah tough one a lot of lessons learned um but it, it's good to hear good to hear i'm not the only one no no oh, we've all been there yeah and by the yeah, way well, i mean no, no i was gonna say i came across the line i didn't realize how bad it was you know my, my partner was there while i was running and, and she um she was just like you you looked like you wanted to you wanted to kill somebody and you're having a horrible time um but i didn't realize how bad it was until like when i crossed the line and and they were taking the timing chip and as I was approaching uh, the tent, the lady was like sort of trying to cat, you know, ready for me to fall over. <laughs> yeah. so anyway. There's um there's an important time as well. And like all that you know, like I again from my experience after Florida, as I said, I did have I post up a video exactly just like 
oh no warts uh, no, not hiding anything because i also want to be able to look back on that video next time i'm gonna do a race and i'm gonna go what did i how did i look how did i feel and what that's my motivation and stuff and like what what mistakes even because i just said look i'm gonna say blurt out my mistakes as i'm like i'm i i'd like to think i'm a competitive um age grouper but as i said i got to that point uh, as you said alan where there's you just you're just trying to keep keep the feet moving forward and not stopping um, so do write them down. You don't have to stick it in a video blog like me. I'm very vain. But um, write it down and all those points where you, and even where, uh, use it as uh, like a retrospective. You go like, okay, I, I dropped my bottle. I, tr- I, I probably pushed too run- I probably pushed too hard at the start of that run because I was, tr- I th- I was playing catch up. Would I have been better off of just sticking at my race pace oh. and then also just making sure I fuel up a little bit more at the first couple of aid stations to make sure I've got enough in a tank? That probably would have got a much better outcome. But write that down. Learn that. Take that into the next race. Because yeah. if you repeat, repeat, rinse and repeat, that's not where we want to be. Yeah. But I think that, that that's where, where I said like a lot of really good lessons learned there. Also le- leading up to it, um, you know, the, the first 70.3 that I did, um, you know, even though it was shortened, the, the main lesson that I learned there was leading into it, get, you, get the nutrition side right. Um and then going into this one, I was also just baffling about beforehand and, and you know, doing last minute planning when it came to nutrition, which is in hindsight, it's, you know, it's an obvious, obvious mistake. Um, so, yeah, well, one that I pay the price for, but, uh, you know, you learn. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's and awesome. even, you know, even, even you know, having a, uh, a plan B for nutrition as well, you know, the, the potential of dropping nutrition, you know, when you're in the bike section is high, you know, where yeah. you, know, you fumble a bar and, there's half an hour's nutrition on the road, you know, so you always, you know, have a good, uh, a good sense of what's available at the next aid station, even though when the next aid station is and what fuel is available there. And, you know, part of your practice is making sure you can stomach the stuff they are giving you on the race. Yeah. Agreed. You know, so yeah. you've got, so you've got options there to, to grab that. So just, you know, uh, you know, other strategies, you know, to, to to cope with you know the the unknowns that potentially are going to happen yeah. yeah and again even for myself as in florida when i said i dropped some nutrition and i had under under plan for my calories because i was too cocky i thought i was doing a five fifth hour, five hour 15 bike and it turned around i knew it was going to be six hours and i went i don't have enough fuel but the the aid stations they didn't american aid stations they only give out liquids they don't give out like uh fuel on that like they don't give out bars they don't give out uh bananas and stuff like that and i went oh man awful but that was See, well, that was... must have just been a been a florida because the others i've been talking to others and like at north carolina we had bananas uh gels and fig bars and yeah. i was actually talking to a girl today and she i told her about yours and she was like wow i've never seen none not have yeah Solid and, I, food. and I was, I was so very that, surprised that very at that strange. as well. Yeah, no, I'm very surprised, but also learning as I sort of, I sort of checked. I did check. There was a couple of aid stations that had bananas and gels, but not all of them. So like I should have known. And again, in that station, there's the risk of dropping. So bring more as an again. And, and I, you know what? I had four or five energy bars sitting in my, my other, my other, uh, my kit with my bag. So I, why didn't I stick them on? Anyhow, live and learn. And again, this is still after 10 hours, man. I'm still living and learning. Um, also, right, Mr. Sean Black, you're new to the new to the gang as well. I, I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to talk. Any observations or how how are you in your mental game or have you a try hero and try devil that you listen to? Um, I I wouldn't have much experience in uh, the Ironman as yeah, as you know. I've only gotten into the triathlon, um, but I think the last time I would have experienced the hero and devil would have been my first standard distance uh, back in Carlingford. Um, I was on the run where uh, I felt a blister forming and I basically just uh, I felt like giving up because uh, I just I couldn't enjoy the pain um, but like uh, some of the teammates that were running by me they, they pushed me on and it got me to the end um, but I think that that's I, I have yet to experience the, the Ironman pain yeah, but it's, it, don't, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, it doesn't have to be iron distance. By the way, the, 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 what we do is we put ourselves through a fair bit of intense sort of running and intense sort of us biking and uh, swimming pain. So 
the the the, the try hero and try devil will arrive at different points. A lot of for for me at standard and sprint distance, it's sort of the 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 try hero is a try devil is going just slow down. This is stupid. You cannot hold up this. Your legs are on fire. Your heart's going to pop out your chest. This is a really bad idea. So like, don't be uh, fooled by it. It's just an endurance. It's not. You just have a different argument with the try hero and the try devil. And it's in a more intense period of time, but it definitely happens. And again, that's why you need reasons why you sort of go this. Okay, I've got to keep the got to keep the pace on. And yeah, that's a little bit of a niggle on my foot. I should be okay. Look, it's three k. I got to push on through. That sort of stuff. Yeah, it arrives sooner um, in, in the sprints and the Olympics. Like I feel like it, it almost hits me straight after the after the swim. Yeah, <laughs> already in pain. Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm racing my heart rate as in, in terms of literally, I feel my if I, if my heart gets too far away from me, it's going to, I lose. <laughs> so yeah, no, no, Sean, don't underestimate that as in terms of, and it's the mental side of the game is at all levels. It's just a bit of a different argument. Yeah, no, I look forward to it though. Excellent, excellent. Marie Staunton, how would, in terms of your try hero and try devils, anything else you'd like to add or disagree um, with? One thing that I do, which sounds extremely weird, is that when I'm training, um, now I, this time of the year, I'm not too hard on myself, but in the, we we'll say February to September, if I happen to be out on a wretchedly miserable day, I just keep saying to myself, gosh, I'm unlikely to have a day as miserable as this on, a, on the event. And it's not that I kind of embrace the suffering, but I'm thinking, this is building grit. I'm building grit here. I'm miserable, but I'm building grit. And I've done things like, um, for those who know Ireland, I've been, had punctures in Carlingford and I've been kind of tempted to ring my husband, but I have cycled the remaining 50 miles home with, you know, so I, when I'm doing a horrible training session and I really am suffering, I think I'm building grit for, the events so um uh, and sometimes even if i'm scheduled to do a long run and it's raining i just say oh i can't bear it but i'll do it anyway it'll help on the day so that's one thing i do is i practice misery um the other thing i do is um i'm kind of mathematical and i think about the bell-shaped curve and i'm probably only going to have one or two perfect or good races and one or two terrible ones. And I think I've done an awful lot of races now. So at the start of every race, I think it probably won't be the best day ever. And it probably will not be the worst day ever because I've had great and terrible days already. So it's probably today is actually probably just going to be an average ordinary day. And that takes a lot of pressure off. And then I do a lot of the other mental tricks that you've both taught, you've all talked about. Um, one thing is that the brain the logical side of the brain, you know, the left side of your brain, if you're engaging the logical side of your brain, you can't, the sensitive emotional part is not going to, you can't actually really operate the two sides together. So like, it, you know, as Mark was talking about doing mathematical problems, well, it could be reciting poetry or anything. So if you're using your logical brain, your emotional one uh, cannot work. And around about my plan C, if I'm doing a long event and it's just totally wretched and I think this is a, the worst day ever, I try and look around and I try and be a kind of a good Samaritan and I try and find somebody who's in clearly worse shape than me <laughs> and I decide I'll adopt them and I'll try and drag them to the finish. So I've actually, I, if I get invested in trying to drag somebody who's maybe crying or walking or whatever, even a couple of kilometres, it distracts me. Um, um, but yeah, I think one of the best thing is to practice suffering during training. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and doing again, that also ties into my poor prep for Florida. There was a couple of long bikes. I I was out and it was ought to be cold, and I, and I took the easy option. I went and did a two hour turbo as opposed to my three four hour bike that I was meant to do, and it was a little bit cold. And you know, at the end of the day that ate at me mentally as well. I went, you haven't done the work, Stephen. As in, like the 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 uh, Pure gave the uh, the tri devil so much ammunition. He went, look, 
you're not here today you're not even focused <laughs> no man but you're right and the, the, and, and back to also backs up uh, uh mark's point a lot of time you need to do training on your own and um, just to have those conversations with your voices in your head and it does mentally toughen you because um even uh, like, like doing group rides and i'm a big fan of it for some of your training it's it's quite effective and you don't have to have misery the entire time but there should be some portion where you are on your own because on the race day it will be you on your own and it'll be having those conversations and dealing with that headwind dealing with that rain and so go you know what i'm just gonna i have to tough this out as in this is my choice to be here i had my, so i've got to i've got to back myself um okay guys listen i'm we're five minutes out i just want to has anyone any open queries or questions about their overall training before because we'll wrap it up there on mental resilience um okay uh just just one um when i'm i don't like training with other people because i have my times right like i've got to run at this speed for this long at this heart rate I've got to ride at this speed at this time <laughs> like and then you kind of you feel bad if you're faster than them and then you have to wait and like I hate it I just train on my own and that's it so I have my speed and that's it like it's just annoying so there's a lot of time where I'm on my own climbing a hill in Surrey questioning my life choices but again, and, and there is there is an element that, yes, and and some of the training in base, you have a bit more flex. As I'm not a massive fan of doing everything on your own and doing everything at, at exact same heart rate. What I tend to do if, you're, if I'm doing my base training, I find people are a little bit weaker than me. So therefore, I'm going to be able to stay in my zone too by like, and, and not blast by them, as I said, have to stop and wait and all the rest. Um, so do consider that if you have like sort of weaker friends and just accept it's going to be a slower ride but you're still in the right level of intensity you're still building up if it's a slower run if it's slightly slower and you're in a lower heart rate you're still getting the aerobic benefit um, and it does break up the monotony of training um, but yes for build stuff tempo stuff in race pace intervals la, 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 and the other later, later on stuff yeah as in I'd be telling people you got to just do that Mark anything to add on that? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, just, you know, group rides, you know, I, I think they're, they're valuable just, you know, to, to, um, you know, to get yourself out of your own head sometimes as well. But, you know, I take your point, Jason, but, you know, there's opportunities there, you know, if you're stronger on a climb, you get a little couple of time, you turn around and go back down the hill again and get some extra hill climbing and meet up with the last person and bring the last person on, you know, so the, there's always, there's always gains and, and wins to be had. Um, you know, training camps I used to go out with the club and there was always a lot of people moaning about, oh, this person shouldn't be in the group. And just, you know, use it as a as an extra training, go to the top of the hill and go back down and cycle back up with them. You know, so you you get an extra miles in the legs. So that's a win-win. Yeah. You know, yeah. so there are there are gains to be had. Yeah, I think with that sort of thing, sometimes um, I've, I've got a friend who, when we initially started off, he we're about the same level and and he's, he's had a few few bumps along the way so so he hasn't been able to train as much but whenever we meet up i always try and meet up at a place that's i don't know 10 kilometers away from our house so that i will from my house whatever and, and um you know if if the ride is quite slow um you know i'll let him drop me but then at the end um and if i ha haven't hit the numbers that i'm looking for i'll just go a little bit longer, go past the house and, and, you know, get in some extra miles and then turn back and come in. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's another that. good way. I, a friend of mine, he's a, he's, you know, a way better swimmer than, than I am and probably ever will be. So, you know, him and I would swim together on a, on a Monday evening and that pushes me on and gets me, you know, improving. And then I return the favor for him because I'm a stronger runner than he would be. And then, we would go running together and I would make sure he's on the pace he needs to get to. So, you know, trying to find people like that as well, that, that sort of as mutual, be mutually beneficial is, is another way of getting a bit of company. Yeah. Good point. 
All right, guys, we're, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much for participating. Um, the next meeting will be at, uh, on Monday at nine o'clock. I need to, there was a problem with the Zoom link. I'm going to sort that. Um, but and also myself and Mark will have a quick chat about the next week's topic. Um, we need to kind of map out our kind of, seeing as we've kind of wrapped up the last kind of PB hit squad and we're coming into the new one, we're going to try to sit down and agree a schedule and we'll email it out and people get a chance to kind of go, actually, that's a topic I really want to attend. And that some of the guys who have seen it before don't need to attend or because we are going to just give a different angle on it. And um, we will be recording the sessions, et cetera, but please do attend. And as you can see, there's, there's little gems of knowledge you're having from just even conversations with different athletes. And that's the whole point of this little mini community. So do make every attempt to attend. We much appreciate it and your input. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Um, we will talk to you on Monday again, hopefully. Have a nice evening. And thank tell you. the truth. And always put a win over the Tri Devil. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy the wine, Steve. Uh, it's off season. It. It's off season. Judgmental. Yeah, well, Jesus. exactly. Enjoy the. I said it, I said it seriously. Yeah, there was I, know, no, I, there was no, I wouldn't mind. I've been thinking no all question. afternoon. There's no judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy, buddy. I'll chat to you, you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.